1947 was the epochal year for India. India's struggle for freedom was spearheaded under the legendary leadership of Mahatma Gandhi. The Mahatma's visionary but simple and humane strategies were based on truth and equality for all that unified India's multi-religious communities, galvanizing them into an unstoppable, non-violent movement. The emergence of India and Pakistan in 1947 was a result of the division of Indian subcontinent advocated by Pakistan's father of the nation, Muhammad Ali Jinnah. But Jammu and Kashmir assumed greater importance for Pakistan because of its strategic location and the rivers Indus, Chelam and Chenab. Under the guise of Jihad, an invasion on Jammu and Kashmir was launched on 22nd October 1947. When the Maharaja of Jammu and Kashmir was informed of the invading force and finding the situation beyond his control to save his state and people, the Maharaja declared the accession of Jammu and Kashmir state to India on 26th October 1947. Nehru discovered that a British commander-in-chief in India, General Lockhart, had full information on tribal invasion and he did not part with this information to his Indian counterparts. But instead of falling into the communal and neo-colonial trap, India followed the humanitarian path resolving the dispute based on Gandhian philosophy and on the 1st of January 1948, India lodged a formal complaint with the Security Council. On 13th of August 1948, the United Nations Commission on India and Pakistan stated that Pakistan, being aggressor, must withdraw its regular forces from Jammu and Kashmir. Thereafter, India must withdraw bulk of its forces, maintaining minimum force for the maintenance of law and order and safeguarding peace, human and political rights of the people of Jammu and Kashmir. Further, the resolution stated in Part 3. Once the above preconditions are accomplished, then the future status of the state will be determined by the will of the people. But Pakistan never withdrew its forces from the occupied areas of Jammu and Kashmir, and a plebiscite never took place. During August 1965, the United Nations military observer, General Robert Nimmo, reported the mass infiltration by the Pakistani army in Jammu and Kashmir. For the success of this invasion, Pakistan relied heavily on the anticipated support of the local population through revolt against the Indian government. But Pakistan failed miserably in its attempts. Preempting major Pakistani assaults, the Indian army launched successful attacks and captured important passes and strategically imported forward defenses in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. Under international pressure, both India and Pakistan signed the Tashkent Agreement on 10th of January 1966. Pakistan began exploiting the unemployed and disgruntled youth of the Kashmir Valley. Over 20,000 youth were taken to Pakistan and trained in handling small arms in about 100 training camps located in Pakistan and Afghanistan from 1989 onwards. By 1994, Pakistan's Army Intelligence Wing, better known by its acronym ISI, and Harkat ul Ansar recruited and trained a large number of Afghans and Pashto speaking Pakistanis from Jamaat ul Ulma e Islam, which ran madrasas in Pakistan's northwest frontier province and Balochistan. This constituted a new militant outfit, the Taliban. To sustain terrorism, the youth were abducted from remote villages and taken across the border for training in handling arms and explosives at gunpoint. The role of ISI is clearly seen in providing logistical support to more than 30,000 Taliban supporters who have been allowed to settle in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, where they're running well-organized terrorist training camps, further vitiating the atmosphere in the region. India has proposed that proper representation of the people must be allowed in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. 
growth of democratic institutions in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir would assist in creating a friendly environment that would lead to the development of mutual assistance and cooperation with India in the field of tourism, agriculture, environment and water management. The need is for ushering peace in the region and it is specifically relevant for the people of Jammu and Kashmir who have suffered so much and for so long.